Welcome back to Asia Business First. Well, Razor, the tech firm co-founded by Singaporean Tan Min Liang, got its start by making computer peripherals such as mice and keyboards for gamers. Recently, it's moved into a host of new products such as smartphones, laptops and even e-payments. And But after the blockbuster listing in Hong Kong last year, the firm's share price has struggled as it remains unprofitable. Now, Wei Du recently spoke to Tam Min Liang on the sidelines of the Forbes Under 30 Summit Asia. She asked him how the company is different from any other firm in the hardware business. There are 2.2 billion gamers today, you know, everywhere in the world. It's the fastest growing segment in entertainment. In fact, gaming today, it's a $100 billion industry. It's bigger than movies. It's bigger than music. And we were one of the first to really focus on the gamer demographic. And with the gamer demographic at its core, we've built probably the largest ecosystem around them. So hardware is just part of our business. You know, we've shipped about half a billion dollars worth of hardware last year, but we've also got one of the biggest software platforms for gamers. We've got 50 million ga uh, gamers on our platform. And to round that off, we've got services where we also own probably the largest virtual credits for gamers, where they can actually play games from a multitude of, um, it's a library of games, right? So, so I think that's really at the core of our business and uh, we've grown really quickly in tandem with the growth of uh, gaming. You recently launched a gaming laptop in Beijing. That's yes. a very interesting choice of location because as of right now, China is not a big market for you, is it? It's one of our fastest growing markets and it's also the biggest gaming market in the world. So we're one of the very few, I think, foreign companies that has done very, very well in China. So if you show the, the Razer, the triple-headed snake logo of uh, Razer to any gamer in China, they will know who we are. So we've been there for a very long time. We work with the uh, incumbents like uh, Tencent. We work with uh, Shanda, with Perfect World, so on and so forth. Um, and right now, you know, our focus on China is to really grow our market share. But yes. People always have this idea of the Chinese consumer being more price sensitive. So necessarily people are going to ask, how do you compete with companies like Xiaomi? We are in a different, completely different category altogether. No, we, we don't focus on things like, um, you know, this Chinese term of wu chao shuo zhi, which is, you know, a value for money, right? For ourselves, we are, we are a premium brand, right? So we are very focused on providing the best possible experience. We use the best materials, the best designers. Um, and we are perceived as one of the most premium brands in the world and specifically targeted at the youth and millenn uh, millennial. So I think there's a space for all brands out there, and uh, we uh, form the apex uh, from, uh, with our hardware, but our software is easily accessible in all different types of hardware. That's part of our ecosystem strategy. Usually laptops and smartphones are low margin products, so you're going sort of from high margin to low margin. People worry about that. Do you think that's why your stock price is down like more than half since the IPO? The entire market has had um, its difficulties. You know, all the IPO companies back then have come down a little bit. But for ourselves, we've got very strong fundamentals, right? Our focus is on the gamer demographic, and the gamer demographic is growing tremendously. And even in the categories that we have mentioned, we actually command a premium um, kind of margin to the rest of the uh, peers that, that are out there. Now, for ourselves, I think, you know, for those who have truly understood the gamer demographic and how fast this gaming um, market is growing, coupled with the fact of um, the growth of esports and uh, the investments that have gone into it. And we are probably one of the biggest brands in the world for esports. It's a very long term view that we're taking. You submitted a e payment proposal to the Singapore government. Did you do it out of a sense of like duty, national service, or could we take that as an indication that you actually want to expand your products and offerings? When the call to go cashless came about in Singapore, you know, we had already built probably one of the biggest virtual credits for gamers out there. And I like to say that the, the people crazy enough to change fiat money into virtual money wasn't a recent uh, kind of a development. Mm -hmm. Like close to 15, 20 years ago, gamers have already been doing that. So with that fundamental technological base, you know, we've got that, uh, you know, on the, on the table. And when the call came out, we said, well, we could just easily extend our tech, tech stack mm -hmm. to encompass that. And We've just uh, recently, about two weeks ago, launched Razor Pay in Malaysia. So at, it's now fully accepted throughout Malaysia at over 6,000 stores, Starbucks, 7-Eleven, so on and so forth. In the first 48 hours, we had over half a million users sign up with over 40,000 transactions over the counter at Starbucks, 7-Eleven, making it the fastest growing e-wallet in Malaysia. And we're just getting started. So this is, um, I think, a testimony of how 
the Razer brand has been able to extend. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit of a kind of a reinforcement of how our tech is able to scale. So it's um, for ourselves in the long term, the word gamer really means all the youth, the millennial, and that's where the Razer brand is really growing into.